Well, happy new day, friends. Today's video is going to be on uh, dressing out our uh, sandy soil in our, here in Florida. We got that terrible sandy soil, and we're going to uh, amend it with some uh, black cow cow manure and some black cow topsoil. We'll be right back after the break. <music> Well, welcome back, friends. You know, for some of you old timers, y'all been watching our, our video channel for, you know, several years, ever, ever since we lived up in Virginia. And uh, many of you have uh, traveled along that journey with us all the way. And I just want to tell you that we love you for that and we appreciate you and we definitely consider you to be part of our homestead family. But uh, for those of you that have been traveling along with us on the journey, you know all too well the challenges that we've been facing when we moved to Florida with this Florida sandy soil. And if you're just now joining our channel, you may not know that, that we uh, do live in Florida. We're in zone 9A, and we live on a blackjack ridge here in a 15-acre homestead. We've got a five-acre garden complex, and all of it is Florida sandy soil. And believe me, that soil is the most difficult soil I've ever worked in, ever. Zero nutrients, very hard to keep uh, watered, and uh, it's extremely difficult to um, keep it weed free. But uh, anyway, Today, uh, we got a gener generous donation from Black Gold Compost Company. They are sponsoring this video with us, and we thank you for your generous donation. And they have helped us all along the way, uh, ever since we moved to Florida, to try to get the sandy soil under control. And they've done a, a great job, and we couldn't thank you enough. But, um, you know, for, for the last five years, I've been working with the soil in the earth beds and the raised beds, and I've been hitting it with the black gold compost cow manure he heavily. Every year I put in three, four inches thick layer. I um, incorporate that in with my soil, and it has built over the years enough to where it, in the earth bed it's holding, you know, I can do it once in the spring, and it lasts for a whole year before that sand consumes it again, and then you have to redress it. But um, this year I'm gonna try something new. It's called black cow topsoil. Now, um, I took some of this last year and I tested it out in a small area, and it worked very good. It, it performed well for me. I was very surprised the way it interacted with that sand. It held that, uh, it was good on retaining the water, and when I mixed the cow manure in with it, it had gave that cow manure something to work with, and um, it worked real well. So uh, we got you know some pallets of this this year, and I'm going to, uh, expand our test case out some more as far as I can take it with four pallets. Uh, we're going to uh, lay a layer of the topsoil down on top of this sandy soil in uh, some of our raised beds over here and then I'm going to incorporate that in with that sand and then we're going to put another three or four inch layer of the black gold um, black cow cow manure on top of that and then when I get ready to plant this year then I'll uh, you know I'll cultivate that and add in uh, side dress it with some uh, triple 10 fertilizer or some bone meal or some blood meal and I think that we will see a huge improvement on our um, soil quality in our raised beds and you know I, I would like to you know expand that in the years ahead to include the big earth bed and uh, as well as every other every other uh, bed that we're growing in out here. So uh, let's go over here to the uh, garden complex. Uh, in the morning, I'm gonna be starting to remove all the silage tarps that we've had out there all winter and the uh, unused areas of the beds or, or garden complex. And um, that was for weed suppression. Y'all remember us talking about that before. So I can now take that silage tarp off, roll it up and save it, and we'll use it again. 
we'll use it again next winter and uh, we'll get that uh, soil up exposed so uh, we can get this uh, all this amendment put down and uh, get this garden ready for the spring. My brother's going to be over here this, uh, you know, Friday, a couple days from now. Uh, he, he comes out and helps me every year with this because it's such a big job and I'm getting kind of old by myself. It's very hard to do this. So he comes out, he's got a landscaping crew and uh, he comes out and helps me periodically on things that I need help with and uh, he's going to be here with his fellers and uh, they're going to help me get this cow and this topsoil uh, spread out into the garden complex and help me get my feet hit the ground running for uh, this spring so we'll see you Friday when uh, my brother gets here and uh, we'll watch this stuff come together and see how see how we like it we'll see you in a couple days
Well, welcome back, friends. Yesterday was definitely a day of some heavy lifting. <laughs> I'm so glad my brother came out to help me. Um, we started off the day um, pulling up the silage tarps yesterday, and uh, we cleared off all the bricks and got them all stacked out of the way and got the silage tarps rolled up and uh, tucked away for uh, future use. So those silage tarps are a, a real big help because when we pull the tarp off there was no weeds in the bed. There was a couple of weeds here and there on the edges where it came up on where the tarp wasn't covering the ground so we just picked them out real quick. But uh, we cleaned out the bed and then we laid down um, 75 bags of the uh, black cow topsoil in this bed, 75 in this bed and uh, spread it out. And once we had it all in the bed and spread out, I was looking at it and it looked like it was maybe about three inches thick, three or four inches thick. So I pulled out my little cultivator and I cultivated the bed in as good as I could. Um, this topsoil is a little heavier than the, the black cow cow manure. So it's, it's kind of a little bit more of a fight and struggle with the little cultivator. But I went ahead and cultivated this bed as well as um, th these two over here. And when I got through, this bed still seemed to be a little bit gray in color because it's, you know, this one's eight feet wide and this one's six feet and that one's four. So the 75 bags in here didn't bring it to the color level I was really looking for. I was looking for a darker color. And when I got through with it, I said, I think we need to add another layer. So uh, we smoothed it out and we put in 75 more bags for a total of 150 bags of the topsoil in this bed alone. And uh, we spread that out. I didn't cultivate it that second time because at that point, the first cultivation that I did had the soil pretty soft. And when I try to go through it on that second time, the, remember the cultivator only goes down three or four inches and I didn't really want to deep till it. I just kind of wanted to layer it. So um, what I, we did was we put in an additional 75 bags. We spread that out in here and then we added another 75 pound, uh, 75 bags of the uh, black cow cow manure on top of those 150 bags of uh, the topsoil and we spread that out and that's that's what you see here today it's um it's layered in the first layer was cultivated with the sand the second layer was just a layer of the topsoil then the third layer it was a layer of pure black cow cow manure now what i'm going to do is let this sit for about six or eight weeks let it get some rain on it let it kind of settle down some and um in the spring we'll come back and I'll cultivate this in again before I plant it and get it kind of incorporated all together the best I can. That should make us a pretty good planting bed. Uh, at this point really what we did was just fill up the bed, I guess you could say, instead of amending it. But it has been amended. It's, it's full, it's been raised up about six inches high now and uh, with, the, with the product. And what we'll do is we'll grow a season here uh, this coming spring. We'll grow some uh, of Nancy's uh, chum a melons in here. And at the end of the season, we'll pull it out, clean it out, and we'll cultivate it. And we'll look at the quality of that soil at, after about one year of being in, in the bed. And we'll see what it has done to change the composition of that soil somewhat. So let's go ahead and... Um, uh, let this sit and uh, we'll be back in uh, the days ahead when we put in the uh, the chummy and we'll watch it grow you know on out until we get it out of there and then we'll take a look at that soil and see how it did after one year um, usually what happens is if i just put the cow manure in there by itself with the sand at the end of one year that sand has consumed it and you could just scoop it up and it just pour right through like sugar you know and that's what we don't want let i want to see how this experiment works on this large scale um, doing it the way we did it and I think that once I have this done um, I shouldn't have to 
add more topsoil every year. I should only have to come in here and just touch it up with a bag of uh, cow manure, a row down the middle, just to freshen it up a little bit and to get ready to plant for the next year. So we'll keep our eye on this in the days ahead. Here we are over at the, uh, the earth bed. And uh, if y'all remember last year, we did a, a video on, you know, trying to keep the weeds under control. And you remember Nancy and I putting out a gigantic silage tarp on this half of the garden. And uh, yesterday we removed that silage tarp and, and stored it for future use. And the bed was um, perfectly clean. It didn't have to pick any weeds. And uh, what we did yesterday is we, we lined out where all of our rows are. I have 28 rows in our earth bed. And we went down each of the row and we put down eight bags of uh, black cow cow manure and um, spread that out down the row. So when I get ready to plant in the spring, all I do is come through with my cultivator and I'll cultivate down the row and grade it out. And that incorporates that cow in with the existing soil that's already there. And at that point, we will be able to plant. This bed has come a long way. When, you, when we moved in here five years ago, we've been working on this bed. It was super white. Just, it looked like snow out here, sugar sand. We worked on it with uh, Black Gold Compost Company. Uh, did us a great donation and we've been working with this bed for five straight years. And every year we've been adding the cow. And uh, this soil now has actually changed in color. It's a little bit more richer than it started out. And whenever I add a new garden in, I only have to do this right here once a year. And I would recommend doing this for any garden, really. So really this bed is really at the point where I was kind of hoping to get it to. It took me five years to get there, but at this point I can add a, a, a little row of the compost down like I just did right here. And this bed will run for a full year before I have to amend it. So we'll plant all the spring planting in here. We'll come back this fall. We'll have another fall garden in the, in the same compost. We won't have to dress it out again. And we won't have to do this again until the next spring. So by doing this now, the way the bed has built up, I can go one full year without having to do anything to it at all other than the initial compost dress out in the uh, early spring. So we're getting there. It took, a, took us a, quite a while to get this place workable. It, it's pretty challenging here in Florida. And I know there's a lot of folks out here that live in Florida and they struggle with this sand all the time. And I just wanted to share this video with you to show you that, you know, we're having some success with it. And it, it may be something you may want to consider for your garden at home as well, if you have sandy soil. So anyway, we'll be back in the days ahead and we'll watch this soil and take a look at it after a full year. So we'll be back soon. Well, welcome back Homestead family. It's been 10 weeks since we installed all that topsoil and all that black cow in these two raised beds to amend that sandy soil. And uh, we, we've let this, this bed sit. We're having to pick out a few weeds real quick before we, before we plant anything on it. And uh, this bed over here, um, We've, we planted some uh, uh, Nancy's Korean peppers in there, her hot peppers. We put them in there oh, a couple of weeks ago or so and tilled it up with a little cultivator and planted those peppers and they are just exploding. So this soil amendment that we've done over here is really, really getting a job done. So we're real happy with that. And over here today, this is the largest one that we have. Um, we're going to till this in with uh, the little cultivator about three or four inches deep. We're going to amend the soil with um, some triple 10 fertilizer. And then we're going to put in a couple of rows of Nancy's favorite melons, her um, chummy. So we'll be putting in two rows of chummy. We're going to um, 
you know, use a fish, piece of fish in the hole with each one, as well as some bone meal and blood meal. And with this new soil, amended soil that we have here, we're expecting some really good results this year with our chummy. Um, so far, the, uh, the, the bed has done fantastic for sitting for 10 weeks, especially. So let's get the day's chore done and uh, get this stuff planted. And we'll watch this soil after the end of the season and uh, see how it's holding together. So far, it's doing really well.
Well, we got the job done, didn't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we put in 45 uh, plants of uh, Nancy's Chummy. I don't know if y'all seen any of our Chummy movies. I, we've grown it on the trellises before. Definitely got some videos on that. I don't think we've ever done one of it in the earth bed like that, have we? No, we never done that. Not that I recall. But you can grow this chummy either way if the, if you're interested in this little melon. It's a delicious melon. Mm -hmm. It's an Asian, Asian melon. But um, we, uh, we got them all installed here and we're gonna watch these uh, all the way through to harvest just since we already started watching this planet. You might as well watch us harvest it too. But at the end of the year, when we get this stuff out, we want to take a look at this soil and uh, see where we stand with it. Cause right now it's fantastic looking, but it's only 10 weeks old. Let's see what it looks like at the end of the summer. So we'll be back in the uh, days ahead. And we'll watch the progression of this uh, chummy. And also we'll watch how this, uh, how this amended soil incorporates with this nasty sand we got here in Florida. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome back, friends. It's been about four months since we amended these uh, these two raised beds with the topsoil and the uh, black cow, and they have really responded very well. We uh, planted this chummy in here. Uh, well, I guess that's been about six weeks, seven weeks now, and it's really um, just thriving. It's, it's doing very well. And this is uh, some of Nancy's um, Korean red hot peppers and that row in this bed is just rolling. So these uh, d these two beds are uh, very fertile and they're, they're responding well to whatever we plant in it. And of course we use, you know, our regular fish and our uh, bone meal, blood meal and uh, to amend the soil. And um, it's, it's done well. So we'll keep our eye on this and uh, at the end of the season, and when I rip out all of this after it's um, spent, we'll pull all this out and we'll take a good close up look at all the soil down here, as well as this over here. So we got a few more months to go and um, so far, I'm really pleased. So let's go over here and take a look at the uh, earth bed because it's done very well this spring as well. So let's check it out. Well, here we are over here at the earth bed. This thing has done really well this year. Um, you know, the corn is uh, still growing. We got, you know, a little bit longer to go to, to get a harvest out of that. But so far, that, uh, that plant material down there is happy. And, uh, you know, our squash is here is, is really booming. Same with our okra. We've already harvested out all kinds of vegetables down here on this uh, east, uh, west, uh, east end of the earth bed here. We've already, already gone through the whole process and uh, ha harvested it. But that uh, soil around there uh, did very well. And this is the one where, you know, we've worked with for five years. So each year, all I have to do is freshen up each row with a, you know, eight, 10 bags of uh, cow down the row and cultivate it in and it does well. So this bed right here is um, doing w pretty good uh, considering what we started with. And uh, thanks to the black cow product, I'm able to grow something here with this sandy soil. And, and you can see the difference in this soil, uh, you know, as compared to, you can see back here on this road, uh, back behind the garden here, you see all that white, white stuff back there is not snow. That's actually my Florida sugar sand. And you can see the whiteness of that and the dark color of this right here, quite a contrast. So we'll keep going. I think that's about all we really need to talk about on this earth bed. But the two other uh, raised beds that are remaining over here, let's uh, come back to you at the end of this season when I 
pull out all that plant material over there and let's get down and take a look at that soil over there and see how it did after a, a whole year, a whole season. So we'll be back very soon. Well, welcome back, friends. It's only been two weeks since the last time we did an update with you, but I just wanted to share with you today the uh, uh, the progression that this chummy has done. It's just literally exploding. And this uh, soil amendment that we've done, and you know everything we've done along the way, this garden has been extremely productive, and as well as the um, the other little bed over here, we. We did it as well, and we're using the uh, red hot peppers that Nancy likes, and every single one of those bushes are just heavily laden with fruit. It's so I would have to say that this is probably the best um, the fruit production that we've had on these melons that I can remember. So we're, we're, and I've been growing them for several years, and Nancy's been having a blast with them. They're, they're really nice, uh, tasted melons. I, I really love the way she makes the little um, uh, little ice cream type dessert with them. We get a little treat with that at night while we're watching TV. But anyway, this is the uh, melons patch and uh, Nancy's picking some. Why don't you come on up here and show them what you got there. All right. Got you some little treats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see Bing Bing supervising every step of the way. <laughs> Look how pretty they are. Oh my gosh. Those Look how are some... beautiful. Look how big, this is the biggest melon yeah. we grew. That's a nice one. Wow. Uh, that's a good size, uh, that's gonna... a good size chummy. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna enjoy eating that tonight. Ooh, and beautiful. You've, you've only picked a few of what's in there, haven't you? Oh yeah, there's bunch of more. I mean, I'm looking down and I see them all everywhere. They're yep. just loaded with them. Mm -hmm. It did and, good this year. And they're still growing. Uh -huh. I mean, it's <laughs> these ain't near through. Yeah. But anyway, you got you a nice uh, crop of uh, those red peppers coming in. They're all green mm -hmm. right now, but you don't have much longer. Those, I know. I'm they'll turn them. red almost all at once. So. Yeah. And they're good size. So yeah. I think you're going to be able to, you and your mama make some really good uh, I, I guess you dehydrate them down and mm -hmm. make pepper flakes and yep. use it in all your cooking. cooking. Yeah. And these melons, the best way to store them for me, I found out is I put it in some lemon juice and freeze them and uh, cut them up, take the seeds out, and it's we use it all all winter almost because we have made ice creams out of them all winter. I remember last last year when you came in and you said this is the last one of the chummies i went oh man <laughs> we loved them I, I really enjoyed them all all winter long mm -hmm. and summer mm -hmm. so anyway it looks like we're going to have enough this year to last a whole year <laughs> mm -hmm. it's going to be mm -hmm. amazing and then at the end of the year it wasn't as sweet so we added some fresh figs frozen figs also that made it more sweeter too yeah, we're mm -hmm. getting a lot of figs this year too. So. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Anyway, the gardens are very productive, they're very healthy, and uh, we'll be back here in the days ahead. And uh, when these things are through and spent, we'll rip out everything in these two beds and uh, we'll take a look at that, a final look at our uh, soil amendment that we did this year. So yeah, see you back here in a couple of months. See you then. Well, welcome back, Homestead family. Happy New Day. You know, it's been a long journey this summer uh, trying to amend this uh, sandy soil, and we put down this uh, amendment back in uh, the early 
uh, first couple of weeks of January, and here we are, uh, second week of November. So they've been in here for what, about 11 months. That's what it's taken to work with this bed. And during the summer, we grew the, um, the crop of uh, chummy up here. It had a fantastic bumper crop, in fact, and uh, it worked uh, beautifully. And over here in the, uh, this little bit smaller bed here, we grew um, the red peppers. And the red peppers were um, absolutely another bumper crop. Nancy's just got tons of them. But anyway, both beds did very well and that sand responded well to all that uh, topsoil and all that black cow that we put in there. And I'm very pleased. If you'll look up close right here, let's take a look at this one little collard green. You can see that the soil is still doing just fine and that's after 11 months so um here we are putting in our fall vegetables right now and i've got in a couple of uh, stands of uh you know cabbage as well as uh, collard greens here and over here some napa cabbage for uh, nancy to make her kimchi and i haven't had to do anything at all to the soil it's still running strong from what we did back in january so i don't think i'll even have to do anything in the spring i i think that uh come spring i won't have to add anything at all i think maybe just a little bit of fertilizer in the hole whenever we plant stuff just like we normally do and um, that soil should be fine for at least another year so I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the results and um, this may be something that you may want to do in your garden if you have real difficult soil like we do sandy soil it's very hard to deal with that stuff down here in Florida but this is a, a good way to, to amend it to where you can at least get something in your garden that you can work with, you know. And so um, here it is. We had a great year. I'm pretty happy with the, with the end result. Um, I have had some questions and some concerns from uh, some of our subscribers about, um, you know, co soil contamination from uh, amino pyrolids in uh, cow manure. And I just wanted to address that briefly. Um, there's been a lot of concerns over that over the last several years. Um, a little bit of history on that is uh, these uh, hay farmers, they grow this hay and uh, so they can feed it and sell it to uh, people with uh, livestock. And what happens out in these big hay fields is they get these real bad uh, weed problems mixed in with their hay and they really don't want that. They just want good clean hay and that's what the livestock owners want. They want a nice good clean hay product that they can feed their livestock and they don't want to buy a bunch of weeds in it. They'd like to have some good old hay, you know. So uh, what they've done is they've come up with all these ideas to uh, and make up these uh, spray on chemicals. They spray out in these big hay fields to um, to uh, you know, greatly reduce this uh, broadleaf weed problem they get inside with their um, with their hay. And the amino pyrolid is a broadleaf post-emergent uh, persistent herbicide, and it's a very strong herbicide. And what has happened over the years is it's worked out great for the hay farmer. It's worked out great for the livestock guy because he's got nice, beautiful, clean hay. What happens is, is this, this uh, chemical is so powerful, among other uh, chemicals that they're using for weed control, it gets into this uh, plant material. The animals that eat the uh, material and it passes through them and it comes out in their, cow, in their manure and it's still pretty potent, pretty strong. And in fact, you can take this stuff and put it in your soil and uh, it, it may last in your soil three, four, five years before you can get rid of it. And um, it's a bad problem. Um, if you're trying to get some animal compost and you, you know of somebody that has cows and you say, hey man, can I have all your cow manure? They'll be happy to let you have it, but you need to make sure 
they're not feeding them hay that's been sprayed with the, any of these chemicals because you're going to introduce that into your soil and then man it's, it's a tough thing to get rid of S some people have un uh, unknowingly used it and it's taken a, a lot to get rid of it some folks have had to remove 12 inches of soil some people have just had to let it sit for four or five years and deluge of water on it to try to wash it and let it de you know deteriorate but it's persistent for a reason it's a persistent herbicide that lasts a long time so uh, the problem is is if you get that in your soil you may contaminate and ruin your garden for a few years so be very careful where you're getting it um, some folks have said to me, hey man, you're using a lot of black cow cow manure, aren't you worried about that contamination? And I said, oh, of course I worry about uh, anything like that getting into my soil. But I've touched base with the, uh, the folks over there and they've, they've told me a little bit about uh, their uh, quality control, which kind of put my, my mind at ease. And um, According to uh, what they've told me at, at Black Cow is they have an agreement with dairy farmers that they that they uh, get their um, cow manure from. None of these dairy farmers use any of these products in their uh, fields, and they grow their own silage, so they don't have to buy all this hay, and they don't use the chemical in their field for their cattle. So. Um, you know they're in agreement with black cow that they're not using this chemical and um or because if they do then they won't use that chemical to make the compost for us to use in our garden so there's an agreement there and the these uh, folks that are in these dairies they're well aware of these uh, chemical herbicides of what they can do and they just don't use it they don't really have a need for it because down here in Florida they grow their own silage so they don't have to buy all these big hay rolls so anyway um, I felt pretty good about that they also when they bring in any cow manure any manure compost they do a grow test on it so they will take a sample of that incoming product and they grow tomatoes and beans and and various little plants in some small one gallon containers and they look to see if there's any of that um, damage from any kind of persistent herbicide you will see the telltale sign that you've got that in there because it'll emerge, the plant's growing good, then all of a sudden all the leaves will start to curl and wilt and become very distorted. Is because the, the cell structure of the plant has been greatly um, dis disrupted and destroyed. So you don't ever get a very good plant if very, uh, highly unusual if you even get any fruit off of that and if you did I, I wouldn't want to eat it anyway but um, you can tell right away if there's a contaminant in your soil just simply by doing a grow test yourself and they do it as well so they uh, do a grow test on their income product their product sits for at least six months composting in all that heat and um, that before it's ever bagged up and sold. So they've, they've, it's been around a while and been checked and uh, I've never had a problem with it. And I'm not saying that that can't happen. I'm just saying they're aware of it and they take every step they can to make sure they're not getting any of that stuff when they're trying to make their product because they make a living off of selling this stuff. So they're not gonna be putting out stuff that's gonna destroy everyone's garden. That just destroys their own, their own business. So I have a little trust in them. I, I feel pretty good with them. I've been using it since 1980 and I've never had a problem in any of my gardens using it. I have had problems in my garden when I got free cow manure and free horse manure from people with um, tons of weeds and also herbicides. So I quit doing that many years ago. Another thing that I don't like to use is uh, garden um, yard, um, yard debris that you can go to these facilities and they collect all this uh, yard waste and all these grass clippings and they take it to these uh, mulching facilities in these uh, various cities and they'll mulch it up and they'll sell it to you. 25 bucks a yard was the last time I saw it somewhere. That was many years ago, so I don't, don't quote me on that price. But years ago, I used to see it. 
it was 25 bucks a yard. But man, when you're buying that stuff, you don't know what in the world you're getting in that. That compost is coming out of everybody's yard in a, in a you know, a county-wide uh, collection, and you have no idea what's in that uh, in that compost, and you're putting it right into your soil to feed your family with it. So I don't use any of that kind of stuff. So I try to stay pretty organic. The um, the, the animal compost I'm getting from Black Cow, I feel very confident in what I'm using. I've never had a problem with it. I'm not saying there won't be in the future, but I'm, you know, I haven't personally experienced that. If you have any concerns about how their product is made or what they're doing with it, give them a call. The, the team over there, the uh, Black Gold Compost Company, are very good people. They've been around a long time and they're very good to work with and they don't mind helping you or putting your mind at ease or explaining to you how they do their product. If it'll make you feel better, give them a call and check it out. If you really have all these concerns and you're just really worried about it, then don't use any kind of animal compost at all in your garden unless you did it yourself. If you have your own animals and you know you're not feeding them hay that come from a, a hay farmer that sprayed it or even in the feed you have to be careful with the feed because a lot of it sometimes can be in the feed itself I would be very careful I wouldn't put anything in my garden that I didn't do a grow test with but anyway I, I said I was going to briefly talk about it and as usual I rambled on and on and on it's because I know that a lot of y'all have a uh, great concern about this because lately it's been hitting a lot of people really hard and it's broken a lot of hearts of gardeners to see their garden just be completely ruined with uh, these uh, chemicals, these persistent herbicides. So I just wanted to talk about it a minute, maybe put your mind at ease a little bit and uh, try to enjoy your garden without worrying that much about it. Uh, do a grow test yourself. If, you're, if you have any suspicions, do a grow test. Uh, a lot of folks will say, hey, put your stuff down, amend your garden, and let it sit a couple of years and turn it and let it, let it uh, incorporate with your soil before you try and do a grow test then, and then if it's good, go. So there's all kinds of things you can do to try to uh, prevent it or at least watch out for it and understand it when it does happen to you and uh, tr try to have a, a good garden in your backyard to enjoy for many years to come. So I thank you for watching the video. I hope that uh, you got a little bit out of it and uh, maybe uh, this might be something you need to try, especially if you have sandy soil like me. Man, that stuff's tough. But uh, this stuff has really worked for me and I think it, it, it's gonna last me for quite a while. So I thank you for watching the videos. I hope our video brought a little smile to your face and a little peace to your heart. So until me and Nancy see you next time on the next video, always remember, by his hands we are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen. Have a blessed day. Well, today's video is sponsored by Black Gold Compost Company. Thank you for sponsoring our channel.